Well guys, it's been a really long time since we've talked about air coolers. That's right, air coolers. In fact, the last ones that we remember checking out were the Zalman CNP S20X and the S17X, and those didn't really turn out that great. In fact, there haven't been that many heat sinks launched lately, so we decided to uh, take a look at some coolers that may have been overlooked, which ultimately led us to this, the Cooler Master MA620M. And yes, this certainly looks like the Wraith Ripper, uh, which was specifically designed to cool AMD's Threadripper processors. It just doesn't have the massive Ryzen logo or the four point mounting system needed for first generation TR4 motherboards. So that gives it a pretty solid engineering foundation since the Wraith Ripper was designed to cool off CPUs uh, with a huge 180 watts to 250 watt TDPs, right? Well, yes and no, because Cooler Master has actually made some changes to the MA620M uh, to make it more adaptable to every current generation system. Uh, and it is definitely an interesting looking air cooler. But is it any good? That's the ultimate question that needs to be answered. So let's check it out right after this. It's true what they say about the Corsair A100. We've got water-cooled hardware for cool temperatures, a cool design that stands out with plenty of good I.O. It's whisper quiet with an efficient fan and occupies as much space on my desk as my plant. The Corsair A100, up to 16 cores with a 2080 Ti. It does not disappoint. Check it out below. All right, so I'm gonna get right into things and say that this isn't a small cooler in any way, shape or form but it actually does look a lot larger than it is. Basically, it's 135 millimeters wide, 125 long, and 165 high, along with a pretty heavy 1.65 kilogram weight. It also costs about 100 bucks, but I've seen it go for as little as $90, but when compared to the competition, that's still pretty expensive. Comparing it to some of the other heat sinks we've looked at, and the big takeaway here is its height. Part of this is due to the space needed for the addressable RGB array, but you'll need to take this into consideration before assuming that it'll fit into your case. This is also a heavy boy at 1.62 kilograms, so that's definitely something to keep in mind. We've already seen a lot of competitors in the $100 price bracket that can handle some very serious heat loads. So the MA620M is in some pretty tough company, but unlike some others, Cooler Master doesn't really mention how much of a thermal load it's meant to handle, so they'll avoid an oopsie like Corsair's ridiculous 250 watt rating for the A500, but it can also mean buyers are left guessing too. To be fair though, some retailers listing says it's 130 watts, but as you'll see in a bit, that's super conservative. So what makes this mini Wraith Ripper so special? Well, first of all, it's the looks. From every single angle, it looks like a clean black monolith that's blacked out with no visible fans and a super dense fin array. Personally, I think it looks great in an underrated way. And well, if you want some bling, there's that too. Uh, in fact, plenty of it. And it's pretty subtle as far as RGB lighting goes. There are two thin lines of addressable LEDs uh, and the outline of Cooler Master's logo, which can be controlled with the RGB software from ASUS and others provided that there's a five volt header on your motherboard. And if you're looking to retrofit this into an older system, there's an included controller that plugs into a SATA power connector and it allows you to cycle through a few preset colors and effects. From a more technical standpoint, this cooler has six continuous heat pipes, which makes their way up into two individual fin arrays. Between those is a single 120 millimeter fan that's completely hidden away by the plastic shrouds. Supposedly, they close these sides to help direct the airflow, but I've got my doubts about that since they're exactly the same size as the fan itself. I have some concerns here too. First and foremost, that single fan, which you obviously can't see, is an SF120R, uh, which has respectable performance, but pushing and pulling air through this dense heatsink isn't easy, and it doesn't have the airflow or the static pressure specs to do that at lower RPMs. There are lots of better fans for this application in Cooler Master's own arsenal, like the SF120M that delivers incredible performance at lower decibels, or the Master Fan Pro air pressure. Swapping the fan is, well, not impossible, but we couldn't find a way to do it without breaking a lot of delicate plastic bits. And that's really disappointing since, other than the Zalman coolers we looked at a few months ago, this is the one heatsink that simply doesn't allow simple fan swap without major surgery. The last thing I wanted to touch on was the copper base, which is pretty well finished, but it's not 
polished uh, to a mirror either. Installation for this cooler centers around the single piece tower design. It's also one of the easiest I've come across in a long time. But guys, don't follow Cooler Master's image of applying thermal compound. Yeah, that is just... Just don't do it. Just don't follow that. Basically, there's a multi-function backplate that's used for every single socket except Intel's 2066, and it also replaces AMD's stock backplate. And given how it's designed, the only way to orient it is with the fan pointed towards the motherboard's I.O. On the backplate, you'll need to find the holes which correspond with your socket, install the metal studs, and then secure them in place with plastic clamps. Personally, I think there are way too much plastic going on over here, and the backplate plus the clamps just feel cheap compared to what other companies include. I mean, this heatsink weighs almost four pounds. You can do better than this Cooler Master. After that's in place, it's just a matter of installing standoffs and the metal retention brackets. Up until this point, it's pretty straightforward, but actually getting the MA620M attached to those brackets is a major pain in the butt. Look, the idea behind the system is a good one. The two screws on the cooler's top are actually connected to long shafts that run all the way down to threaded tips, so screwing it up is almost impossible. Technically. The problem is that they're a couple of millimeters too short, so you'll need to tip the heat sink, start screwing in on one side only a bit, and then press down hard on the other side to get started. Even then, it's easy to think that there's even mounting pressure on the CPU, even though there isn't because the screws tend to spin in place. So keep pressing down and eventually the screws will get to their locked position. This messed up insulation could be what's causing poor temperatures and some of the other reviews that we've looked at. So Cooler Master, if you're watching this, it's a great concept, but I think it's executed poorly. Another thing I noticed is the cooler doesn't actually sit straight on any mount, and I tried it on AIM4, 2033, and Intel's LG1200. It isn't major, but once you see the off angle, you just can't unsee it. All right, so now on to performance, and the benchmarks are evolving again with a new test. We're still gonna use the 10980XC set to constant 165 watts and 260 watt power settings, but I'm adding an output of 120 watts too. This will allow us to better judge the performance of coolers uh, when they're installed onto more efficient stock CPUs like the Ryzen 3000 series or Intel's Comet Lake processors. Not only that, but we can actually include uh, affordable coolers to the charts as well. So with that out of the way, let's begin. But as always, if you want to read a little bit more about our testing methodology, you can check it out in the description down below. At lower heat loads, the MA620M does really well against the other coolers, but that should be expected given its price. The motherboard doesn't need to ramp up its fans all that much either, which makes this one of the quietest heat sinks we have ever tested. But remember, other than the U14S, it's the only one here with a single fan. Moving on to more normalized fan speed testing at 1000 RPMs, it starts dropping behind a bit since the other coolers with their dual or 140 millimeter setups just have more thermal mass to spare. But at that speed, it's still really quiet. So while you're sacrificing in temperatures, the MA620M stays true to its silence claim. Just remember that it'll be operating at these decibel levels in other high wattage normalized fan speed tests as well. Moving up to full fan speed, and I think we've hit the minimum temperature the CPU can get to under air cooling with our ambient conditions. So when it's running at full speed, the SF120R isn't quiet. As a matter of fact, it's almost as loud as the dual fan D15 and the U12A, but it also seems like the MA620M's closed design baffles some of its noise as well. Moving up to 165 watts, and this cooler is surprisingly able to still hang with some of the best air coolers on the market right now. However, this also meant that the single fan was operating at nearly full speed. But remember, anything under 40 decibels is still super quiet, so this is a pretty good result, technically. But reducing the fan speed to a normalized 1000 RPMs reduces the noise, but it also starts to show this cooler's weakness. I mean, look, 75C is still a really good result when trying to cool this kind of heat output, since it's also the quietest here at that speed. But for that price, the other high-end heat sinks are better options. Cranking the fans to full speed isn't something you'd want to do, but temperatures get lowered drastically. Of course, this comes at a sacrifice of noise. Now, moving the power output of our CPU to a constant 260 watts really separates the men from the boys. Honestly, the only coolers that really have the thermal mass to keep adequate temperatures 
are the D15 and the Dark Rock 4 Pro. The MA620M holds things together better than I thought it would though, but it's also operating at 100% here. So it's also one of the louder options and by far the loudest single fan cooler here. At a slower 1000 RPMs, you can see that Cooler Master relies on fan speeds to keep temperatures in check. And when we transition to full speed, there's no difference from the default speed test since the MA620M was already running at that full speed. So to wrap things up, I think the Cooler Master MA620M is a mixed bag, uh, but if you look at the good points, they outweigh the bad by a long shot. First and foremost, the design. I'm absolutely in love with this matte black clean look. It's definitely something that's unique compared to the competition out there. And they've also implemented you know, a tasteful addition of RGB lining at the front. And if you don't like it, you can obviously turn it off. Everyone has their own taste, which is totally fine. So you might not be a fan of the way how this looks, but some of you might and that's totally fine. As for cooling, I was pleasantly surprised since I didn't expect much, but it actually combined really good temperatures with low noise, provided your CPU isn't producing heat loads that would match a small nuclear reactor. But while everything looks good from a performance standpoint, Cooler Master didn't stick the landing because if you look at the installation procedure, it can get a little bit tedious because the two screws, they look simple, you could end up running into some mounting problems and the whole thing actually doesn't sit straight on any socket. It could just be one sample, but this could also hint uh, for some quality control issues in the future. So that's certainly something to keep in mind. I think the biggest hurdle for most people will be the MA620M's price, because if you look at alternatives like the U14S or the Scythe Puma 2, uh, they cost less, but they perform better and they also run quietly. So it ultimately comes down to your choice. Uh, do you prefer something that looks better or something that costs less, or something that's sort of in the balance, or balance between the two. So once you ask those questions, I guess you'll find something that fits your need. So on that note, thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Whoa. <laughs> I totally did that on purpose. And this is the only sample I have. I didn't break it. That's the biggest takeaway from this video. I did not break the air cooler. I did not drop the air cooler. Basically, I didn't pull Linus. That's what I'm trying to say. All right, bye.